Today we are diving into Azure DevOps. So whether you are new to this tool or are only using parts of it, this video will give you a holistic overview of all the functionalities that you can use on your IT project. My goal is to help you understand those key concepts in a simple and accessible way using lots of visuals, diagrams, and even short demos. And stay to the end of this video while I walk you through an end-to-end -end real life scenario of how you can use each of the areas of Azure DevOps on your project. But first, what is Azure DevOps? So Azure DevOps is Microsoft integrated solution for managing an entire application lifecycle. It provides the tools for planning, developing, testing, and delivering software. So some of the key features of Azure DevOps are Azure Boards. This is where you can track your work using Kanban boards, backlogs, and powerful analytics. You also have Azure Repos, which is a set of version control tools that you can use to manage your code. You have Azure Pipelines, a CI CD service that builds, tests, and deploys your code to any platform. You also have Azure Test Plans, which provides several tools to test your apps, including manual and exploratory testing. You also have Azure Artifacts, saving you time with sharing your library of code. And finally, you have an overview area where you can see a summary of your project. And as well, you can use dashboards and start building a wiki for your project. So let's spend a little bit of time covering in more details each of those specific modules. So let's start with Azure DevOps Board. So imagine we are planning the implementation of a complex IT system. Let's say we are implementing a CRM system or a new website. There's a lot of tasks to handle in such project, right? You have your provision of the servers, you need to document the requirements, you need to probably migrate all data, you need to tweak the UI, integrate with the other system and so forth, right? So Azure DevOps can be used as your central digital board to track and manage all the work that needs to be done to finish such project. Effectively, what you can do is organize and prioritize the tasks, right? So you can create list of tasks and work for everyone that needs to be completed. You can use user stories to capture requirements. You can group them into features, epics, and so forth. And you can also prioritize them to make sure that the team focus on the most important ones. You can assign work, of course. So each item type, like user story or task, can be assigned to a specific person so that everyone knows who needs to do what. Track progress, so work moved through different stages from not started to in progress to completed. Everyone on the team can see the status in real time. Collaborate easily, so each team member can add comments, share updates, attach files directly into items. So since it's online, everyone can access it everywhere, anytime. Visual boards, so Azure Boards uses visual layout called Kanban boards, where the work is represented as cards on a board making it easy to see what's going on at one glance. So let's explore the different components within really Azure DevOps boards now. So you have your work items. So you will use work items to create and track, you know, features, user story, bugs, tasks. Each of these come with a preset of fields to capture different type of information. So work item types are dependent on the process you choose when you start a new project. So by default, there are four types of processes available and you can tweak each one of these with your own you know, um, work item types. And if you need to make any configuration changes to the fields, that's possible tweaking the process. Board, so as we said, boards are your visual tools to help you manage work and track progress on your project. They provide a clear overview of the work items, their status and the status of the workflow and column represent the different stages as work progresses card move across those columns. Backlogs, so a backlog is a prioritized list of work items that guide your team and help managing your project scope. So you can effectively organize your backlog with different hierarchies, for instance, having epics for large items, then feature in the need, and then user stories for specific requirements. Sprints. Sprints are used to plan work within a specific period of time. You can use a task board to see all the user stories and the related tasks planned for the specific sprint. Queries. Queries are used to list and search specific work item types like bugs, tasks, user story, etc. 
You can effectively filter those specific items based on criteria. You can create many different queries. You can organize them in folder, share them with your team, and effectively even use them to uh, create dashboards that are um, effectively display information based on those queries. Delivery plans. So delivery plans are visual tools to help you see the schedule of user stories or feature that your team plan to deliver over time. A delivery plan shows a scheduled work by sprint or iteration path of selected teams against a calendar view. So let's now cover Azure repos. So Azure repos, really, you should see it almost like a collaborative way to writing code, right? So let's imagine that we are almost like writing a book, right? You want to write a book and you have many developers or many writers contributing to the book. So instead of kind of sending back and forth files between each other, you can all collaborate from the same online shared document where everyone can see and edit the work of each other, right? So repos allow us to do the following. Central storage for code. So as you can see, everyone can access the files from one central location collaborative environment so also it allows for multiple people to work on the code at the same time um, without really interfering with each other you can track changes so if there are some changes made you can track the history of the changes who made what you can even compare different files as you can see here organize your work so a team member can create separate section called branches um, to work on the different parts of the project Reviewing updates. So before changes are part of the main project or the main code, team members can review and discuss them. This helps catch mistakes and ensure everyone agrees on the updates. So if you take a look at what is available in Azure repos, so effectively, of course, you have your files when you can see all the files of your project being stored here. You can also see the commits. So, you know, all the snapshots or of your, your files and code that has been done can be viewed here. And effectively, you can see straight away, you know, the changes that have been done. You can see the pushes being done as well. So all the uploads from your local commits to Azure repos are shown here. Branches. So for this one, I have only one branch, but you can have many different branches as well. So this is a whole different topic and a whole different areas about the branching strategies. You can see tags, which are markers used to label specific points in your repository history, often used to denote release versions, for example. You can also see pull requests, which is a method of submitting contribution to a repository. It's a request to merge effectively your changes from one branch to another. Azure pipelines. So let's now explore Azure pipelines a bit more in detail. So with this tool, you can effectively um, think of it of pushing your code from different environments, right? So you have build an application in your dev environment. You can automate the deployment of your code into your test environment, into your production environment. You can have stages in between. You can have uh, different actions. You can have people validating, you know, the stages of the deployment and so forth. So the different areas that Pipelines offers are the following. So let's first start with continuous integration, which is effectively the practice of for your developer to frequently merge their code changes into the central repository, right? So each integration triggers an automated build and a testing sequence down the track, right? Then once your code has been merged and tested, you can go to continuous deployment, right? Where effectively your application, your code is then released into testing environment, production environment, and so forth. Uh, the next one you can see there is pipelines. So pipelines are effectively workflow that let you define, you know, how your code moves from dev to a further environment, right? It's how are there stages? Are there specific jobs that needs to do? Do we need to uh, automate some of the testing? How is your code being deployed and so forth, right? So then you have agents. So agents are effectively compute resources or machines that execute the task of your pipelines, right? And then you have triggers. So triggers are effectively configuration that determines when we run our pipelines, right? So um, they can be triggered automatically when a code is being committed, when we have a pull request, or effectively ask at scheduled times. So now let's explore in Azure DevOps what is made of pipelines, right? So if I click on pipelines and I go to the first um, feature, which is the pipeline feature, right? 
I can see all the pipelines that I have. So for example, here I can even edit my pipeline to see you effectively. The pipeline is made of, you know, tasks, you can have variables and so forth. You have, as we said, those releases. So here effectively, if I go back and click again on my release, I can see, you know, the manual trigger or the automated trigger can be done here. And then I can see what happened effectively, my release pipeline here. Library, so you can use library effectively to store resources that you can use in other effectively pipelines, right? So think of it of all the secrets, um, some of the files, the secure files that you can store here. Um, task groups, so effectively task groups encapsulate the sequence of tasks that you can effectively reuse throughout your different pipelines and so forth. And one last thing, uh, some of the key concepts of um, the Azure pipelines are nicely explained on the Microsoft Learn website, right? So they explain the key concept where you have your trigger, you have your pipeline with the stages, each stages have effectively agents and jobs and so forth, and you have your steps. So this is kind of, and there is even a nice video explaining effectively how pipelines run in Azure DevOps. So let's now take a look at Azure Tests, which is effectively the module that will help you run all your testing, right? So automated testing or manual testing. So Azure Tests provide the following features. So you can plan your tests, right? So where you can list detailed test cases that outline the steps required to test a particular feature of your software. You can also execute tests from there. So tester follows specific test cases step by step to verify functionality manually. Or you can also configure automated testing for repetitive tasks. You can track and manage bugs. So if effectively test fails, you can log a bug directly from the test case. Bugs can be then assigned to a developer to fix it. You can organize all your tests so you can group related test cases into test suites. So for example, you know, the whole checkout process test can be grouped together and then you can organize them within test plans to manage testing from different, you know, releases or sprints. Analyze results. So of course you can generate reports and dashboard to see which tests have passed or failed, helping you assess the quality of your application. And finally, very important as well, collaborate. So allows everyone from the team to see the testing progress, see the bugs and showcase what needs attention. Okay, so now let's see together what comes in Azure DevOps with test plans. So by default, when you navigate to test plans, you will only see those three elements. So those three area test plan, test progress report and runs come with the basic license. If you want more additional features that I will explain you in a few in a few minutes, you need to purchase an additional license. So ex let's explore first what you get with the basic license. So you get your test plans in a sense that when you start creating test cases from, for example, an item on a board, so from a user story, you can go here and create a test case. So add test. So you can create your test cases. By default, those test cases will be added to a test plan, which can be viewed in here so you can see my test plans if i go back to my test plans they have been created already and named already automatically i cannot recreate additional test plans here without that extra license so that comes with the basic license you can see still access your progress report and then you can also see the run so when you effectively run um you know your test you can effectively look at the what happens, um, how the runs went and so forth. So you, you have access to that, right? Now let's explore the feature that you get when you purchase the test plans license that gives you as access to additional features in test plans. So you can see here, I have access, for example, to parameters, right? So parameters effectively help you test uh, your test cases using different test data. So for example, you can test, you know, adding different quantities to a shopping cart, for example, right? You can test with adding one, five, 10, 20 quantities and so forth. So you can configure those parameters here. You have configuration. So user can have different configuration, one for a web browser, one with a different operating system and so forth. So you can configure those operate, uh, those configurations there, there and runs effectively that we covered previously, where you can effectively see all the runs of your test cases. So let's now take a look at Azure artifacts, 
which allow effectively developers to publish and consume various types of packages, right? So the features that we see there is shared library of code. So developers often use small pieces of code called packages that perform common tasks like logging into a system, displaying a calendar, choosing a date and so forth, right? So Azure Artifacts provide a place to store these packages so that everyone on the team can access them easily and use them in their pieces of code effectively. Second is reusing the code save times, right? So instead of writing the same code over and over again, developers can use these shared packages, which means that they can focus on specific pieces that they need to build rather than reinventing the wheel every time. Secure sharing, so the platform ensures that only the authorized team members can access these specific packages. So this keeps the code safe and ensure that everyone in the project can trust effectively the packages to be accessed by the right team members. And finally, Azure DevOps provides an area where we can see effectively a summary of your project. So you have a homepage, you can share information, you can share the latest statuses and, and activities on your project. Then you have dashboards, which provides you and your team visibility on the progress of the project on various areas, right? So each team can configure their own dashboard. Those are highly customizable. You can add your own widgets, your own charts, and you can monitor effectively the progress and the trends of your project, right? So um, very handy tool here. And then you have Wiki, where you can use uh, to effectively document information, right? So it's almost like a wiki with specific pages. The only caveat here is that you have to use the Markdown language, um, but you can effectively link files, link images, link attachment, and you can also link work item types directly in your wiki. So that can be quite handy if you wanna start effectively documenting um, items or documenting things linked to existing work item types. And as promised, for the end, we're going to cover an end-to-end -end scenario of how a team might use every single items or feature of Azure DevOps Board. So you can see here, you know, the business operations devs collaborating using Azure Boards, organize their work, you know, using visuals to track progress, assign work to developers, and then effectively your developers start using Visual Studio or any other platform to kind of write your code or a low code platform might be also like some configuration like the Power Platform and so forth, but they, they configure things or they, they develop code. And then that code is then pushed to Azure Repo where your code can be stored in a central location. We can track and compare the changes, the dev work is being organized. Then effectively we use pipeline for the continuous integration. So your code is constantly, constantly built. Then con uh, with continuous deployment, we're deploying the code in the higher environments like tests, UAT, production, and so forth. You can use and leverage triggers, stages, tasks, approval, and so forth as part of our pipelines. Then you can use tests where we execute the testing. We can track and manage bugs. We analyze the results. Also, your pipelines might produce some artifacts like where that you can you know, share library of code, or you save time by reusing the code. And finally, the whole overview of Azure DevOps that provides you the summary, dashboards, and wiki to store additional information if need be. Voila, I hope that you liked this video. And if that's the case, give me a thumbs up and don't hesitate to subscribe to the channel. I'll be doing more videos about Azure DevOps and Microsoft Business Applications. So see you in the next one. Bye.